grew up in Norcross and Lawrenceville. I went to Central Gwinnett High School, which is close by here. Now, Gwinnett County is my home. It's where I've grown up. And this county is what the rest of the country is going to look like in 20 years. And it's important to me that we have reflective leadership that understands the, you know, the issues that our community faces. Now, my campaign is about bringing health care, economic equity, and fighting against the archaic immigration laws that are plaguing our communities. And I think it's very important that we speak out and be present. You know, I've been on the front lines of progressive politics for nearly a decade. I fought to help elect progressive candidates up and down the ballot. I worked on Atlanta City Council race for Andre Dickens. I worked for Jason Carter when he ran for governor. Secretary Hillary Clinton when she ran for president. And most recently, I was the Southern States Director at the Democratic National Committee for the National Party. And, you know, I'm running now because folks are hungry for reflective, authentic leadership. And it's important to me that we have progressive, bold voices at the table to make sure that we have leaders who will speak for us and stand for us. And so I, I, I really love the fact that you guys invited me and I, I, I appreciate the culture and the beautiful um, outfits that I've seen and I look forward to speaking with you more. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about my campaign, you can go to www.nabilaforcongress.com. It's N-A-B-I-L-A-H. FORcongress.com. And uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. So I have my people here all marked. I think somebody took it away. Um, that's not good because I had everything marked about, you know, certain changes that are done here. So give me a moment. I ask them to, to be, uh, besides, we ask them to, if you're not a guest speaker, to be, please be mindful because we can't be here for the longest time. Uh, just be brief, give the other, the occasion to speak so that we can move the location as fast as possible. Because the least, the last thing I want to do here is just say, my man, give me the mic. Or for her to be standing or be knocking. It's so unprofessional. So we want you to be very professional with us as we will do our best to make sure we keep this thing very nice and simple. All right, so we will, okay. I'll give the mic to my co hosts uh, Good afternoon. Um, my name is Mrs. Masa B. Sila. And I want to welcome every one of you guys to this unique occasion in Atlanta, Georgia. And we pray that the Almighty Allah continue to guide and protect us for this unique occasion in a successful tone. Thank you. Question by Imam Adam Fofana will do an opening invocation for us. Let us pray. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم إن الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم إن الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخل And your Lord prescribed that you should invoke him in the beginning of your affairs to receive his blessing. O oh Allah, the Lord of heaven and earth, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Al Malik, Ya Al Quddus, Ya Salam, Ya Al Mu'min. Ya Al-Muhaymin, Ya Al-Aziz, Ya Al-Jabbar, Ya Al-Mutakabbir, Ya Al-Khaliq, Ya Al-Bar, Ya Al-Musawwir, Ya Man Lahu Al-Asma'u Al-Husna, Sali'uka Bi Asma'ika Al-Husna, Allah, Al-Merciful God, Beneficent, 
We ask you with all your beautiful name that you bless this gathering of us. That you bless each and every one of us, people who have spent their money to be here with us. We have no other goal than come to support each other and uplift each other and help our people. Oh Allah, people who are suffering, please put an end to their suffering. People who are sick, Allah, we ask you to cure them. And the objective that we gather here today, Allah, that you make our gathering successful so we attain our, our, our objective, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Malki, Ya Qudus, Ya Salam, Ya Mu'min, Ya Muhaymin, Ya Aziz, Ya Jabbar, Ya Mu'min, Ya Falik, Ya Bar, Ya Musul. People who have attained this conference, Allah, from our minister to our ambassador to our Counselor General who have traveled all the way to be here with us to show their support. We ask you, Allah, to bless each and every one of them and every individual who are here to bless their families, to bless their wealth, to bless their health, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will live as your obedient servant who have not lived in this life but left an impact on the life, positive impact on the life of others. In your name we pray. Amen. Uh, I will please ask the audience to please stand up to recite the national anthem of our beloved country, <coughs> Latino. Please. I know it has been a long time from pre-K to middle school and high school. Most of us can't remember it, but we got it. We got it. One, two, three. Oh, uh, hell, I be around here. check this thing off, you know. All right, so let's have a little quiet. So we now ask the, uh, the president of the federation to call the uh, uh, official program into action. Mr. President, can you grant the official opening of the program? Welcome. Um, again, this is uh, very beautiful to see every one of you here today. Uh, we have come here to discuss issues and to lay a roadmap as to how we socialize, but also how, as we socialize, we also think about how we impact the lives of our brothers and sisters here in Baikon. So as we go through our discussions today, let's keep in mind that a key aspect that has brought us here together is for us to be one. Being said, I want to officially declare this convention open. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Welcome the Chapter President of Alana, Georgia, Mr. Lai Ture. Greet and welcome our President Chapter, Mr. Lai Ture. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to everyone. Honorable <coughs> uh, Council of Cynthia Bramford, 
information over Jura Sano, our honorable guest speaker. Uh, uh, it's kind of difficult for me to call him, but I know I gotta go to because he in your office is Keta. Mr. Keta, thank you. Our uh, honorable uh, president, uh, honorable Amara Pone, thank you for being with us. Uh, guest uh, Peter P, thank you. Co-chairman, I'm passing my position to you right now, Peter. Thank you, co-chairman. <laughs> Um, our former president, uh, Balali Traore, and Honorable Seku Kene, all the former officials and members of the executives of the uh, Honorable Delegate, yeah, Super Delegate and Delegate, you know, these are the people important in this program here that will make a decision tomorrow for this noble organization. <coughs> Say to you, Abba, thank you for coming. Um, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the uh, very, very glad that you guys are here today to participate in this historical 12th annual convention of Tanosa, Federations of Liberia Mandingo in the United States. Uh, just to say, and we are happy, we hope you enjoy your state in the state of Georgia. Thank you, God bless, and God bless. I am very sorry to see you clap that low for light I mean, come on. This man has been working very hard from the day you got here. And when he was coming on the stage, you applaud very little. He gave you a big speech and welcome you. He gave you a very little. So who are you going to clap for? So can we do it one more time? Like, please stand up, man. Thank you. All right, I give this tax to uh, the Secretary General. He threw it back to me, so oh, the, 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 the MC already did it, so I don't need to do it. I'm going to talk about something different. MC will always keep pointing to people and recognizing them, but officially, um, he should have. But anyway, so I'm going to take over. So I would like to recognize the President of the Federation, Mr. Bangalis Mohamed Sise. I mean, Mohamed Bangalese. <laughs> I'm so sorry, see, I'm speaking so far. Yes, <laughs> President Mamadi Bagali Sise. <laughs> Please stand up. <laughs> and the Vice President for Administration, Marikin Kenya, who actually gone to Mecca this year. The Vice President for Operation is Brother Musa Trawale, he's not here. And the Secretary General is Al Jabate. Is he in the house? Oh, he's not here. He was here yesterday. Now we go to the board and secretary team. Um, I have to look at that and call it in because I know Mohammed Ansadola is the chairman of the board of directors and the co chairman, Mr. Ibrahim Kroma, is here. Oh, what's going on? The chairman, board of directors, is not here. Oh, where is he? All right, Ibrahim Kroma, co chair, can you please stand up? He's outside too. My goodness. And then we have the board secretary general, OPS Bamba, is he here? Oh my goodness. All right, so we skip them. And then we have the sports club, member of the sports committee chair. Are you, I mean, sports committee, are you here? Secret meeting. Please stand up, okay? And then we have the, the election committee, members of the election committee. Yes. 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 Yeah, please clap for people when you understand that it's all about recognition. The only thing we can do in this community for our set is to recognize people. We don't get paid, so when we, when we are in this kind of event, we'd like to recognize you so that when you stand up, people can clap for you. That's all we can do, because it's community service. You know, that's, that's the least we can do, you know? So when we call somebody's name, be proud, stand up. Let the people clap for you, don't be shy. And then we have some distinguished guests among ourselves. Uh, we will first look at our guest speaker, uh, Brother Mohammed Keita, who's the guest speaker. Yeah. Brother Keita served as a guest speaker in Dallas, and you know how powerful he is, so we don't know what he's bringing down today. <laughs> yeah. And, I'll be and we have our Honorable Imam, and Imam Adama Fofana. We have the Liberal Honorary Council, Ms. Cynthia Blafo. We have like, a former uh, finance minister, Mr. Amara Kone. And we also have uh, Famusa, former vice president, I mean, former president, uh, Sibu Kennex in the back there. If you hear a voice of, voice of uh, the people, right? Yeah. Voice of the people media, that's the man right there. He came into media in like a few times, he took over. Marvelous. All right, we also have some distinguished guests from our brothers from. Uh, 
And we have our father, uh, Lassana Dugwe. Uh, I'm in grace the occasion. Mr. Ayuba Jazino Kamara is here, President. If you're a delegate, please stand up. All delegates. Come, unknown university represented on the stage, please. We have our own paper script. Uh, it's all confusing. I'm sorry for that. I put you on the spot. Um, yeah, I'm very sorry. Um, so we have, right now, we're going to go into remarks. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of people here who want to speak. So as we give you the chance to come up and say one of few things, again, I'm going to really stress that. You make it very brief. Uh, Everybody is important. We, we mean we respect you. We want you to tell us something. But we'll have other people that come up here and speak. So we will recognize uh, former President Bangali Trawale to come and give us a few more. Go to class, to go to school. I didn't know you got a degree in. <laughs> I don't have a degree, but I yeah. You know, uh, like we all been to functions and so for this thing, you know, to make a remarks. Sometimes in Cuban upon what you see and what you think they should go right and thank other people and so forth. So to speak before the guest speaker, maybe speak on something that he will talk on, it kind of dilute his message. You don't never tell what he has. So just uh, I think it's an honor to call me here to make a remark, and I'm so happy. I have a lot to share with you people, but uh, I will defer whatsoever in that maybe on the side. So I want to say thank you very much. I'm happy to serve this community and all will be here to share my little idea with you people. Thank you. Uh, so who can I to make a remark? Good afternoon. I want to say thank you very much to the MC for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, I'm very much delighted to be here. Uh, like a, um, a former president said, we don't want to say a lot before the keynote speaker, so I'm going to be very brief. We are here for a reason. And uh, for me personally, I came here for a reason, one reason and one only, is to make sure that before we leave this particular convention, we should leave our community united. <laughs> open heart, open peace is on the table regardless of what you think of yourself or your opinion. So I want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity. We look forward to a peaceful convention. Thank you very much. We would like to call on our father, Lassana Dukla, to please make a remark. And welcome to everyone. My greeting is to you and to everyone who has come. Please join us peacefully and let's leave peacefully. Thank you. And we'll call on um, uh, Jazino Kamara. I know you made a remark yesterday, but you know we want to really uh, tell you that we really appreciate you traveling from England all the way here to visit the region. And he is the coordinator for the Liberian Association um, in Europe, out of Europe. You know, so he's the coordinator. So, thank you. Wow. Uh, good afternoon. Well, let me use this time to extend a special greeting from. President Abu Sako, the president of LIMAFI, the Federation of Labre Maningo in Europe. Uh, a special greeting from the president to Honorable Madi Sise for extending uh, our invitation to us. And Labre Maningo in Europe, what we want to say to you guys here, yeah, we are following your step. Whatsoever you do here, it will definitely people will use that as an example. So remember, we we'll stay together, like Amara Kone said to us, let's stay under the tank or we'll make the mess of us at the tank. Assalamu alaikum. We'll call our former board chair, uh, Famo Kone, to make a remark. Amara uh, Kone, to come and give us a remark. Madam Ko, MC, um, all protocols observed. I'm just happy to be here. I, I see that the energy in the room is very high. Uh, my message is that we continue to stay together. Uh, there are heavy burdens on all of us these days, particularly when you consider what's going on back home. So by coming together as a community, we can do a lot of good to help our community back home. 
And I look forward to listening to the guest speaker. I look forward to hearing from the representative of the Anur University, something I think we should embrace at this convention and support it. We need an Islamic university in Liberia for good. Thank you. The Liberia organization, um, uh, Good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Bior Bropla. I serve on the uh, board of directors of the Liberian Association with uh, your very own Lai Touré. Uh, we have worked a lot together to bring about unity and prosperity in our community. It's about, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Honorable Council General, about 25,000, give or take, Liberians that live in uh, the greater Atlanta area. So it's a huge community, and the challenges of keeping us uh, on the same page is, is quite high, but thankfully with Lai's support and with our Honorable Consul General, we've been doing a great job. We welcome you on behalf of all Liberians here. Thank you. Well, um, the President of EULA, that's the Union of the Liberian Association of America, uh, Mr. Famba Fofana, he's not here, but he has a representative too, who will speak on his behalf, and he sends out the message, and we'll call on Brother Jesus Sako to deliver that message. Brother Jesus Sako. I have for President Famba Fofana, and I, in my capacity as the uh, foreign minister for EULA, we want to bring greetings to the leadership of Mosa and to the organizing chapter of Alai Toure. Unfortunately, the executive president could not be here due to uh, some personal reasons, but he wants to extend his heartfelt thanks to all the conferees who have uh, conversed this afternoon and uh, he wants me to let you know that the organization, the EULA, appreciate the partnership that exists between uh, FEMOSA and EULA. Really appreciate that. In terms of our dual citizenship, in terms of our advocacy activities that FEMOSA and EULA do together. On behalf of EULA, we will be uh, presenting, we will be pledging $200 to FEMOSA. I, So Mr. President, the treasurer will write the check, so uh, you will let me know, you know, what to be written on the check. Uh, we will mail it, or someone in the East Coast can pick it up from the, uh, from the treasurer. Again, thank you very much, and uh, we look forward to a peaceful convention. Again, I would want to welcome our known university representative on the stage, please. Thank you. Mr. Mamadi Sisse, executive members, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. It gives me a great pleasure to be here today in this uh, wonderful gathering. Uh, my name is uh, Brother Brahma Silla. Uh, I'm the global coordinator for our new university in Liberia. Um, I'm delighted to inform you of the creation of this uh, modern Islamic university in Liberia, uh, which would consist of uh, various disciplines such as information technology, economics, management, education, nursing, computer science, social, uh, uh, sociology, agriculture, and medicine. But right now, the concentration is on uh, an associate degree program uh, focused on information science. Uh, and it is our hope within four years now we have a full uh, department of all sections, all, all colleges that will be uh, functioning in Liberia. Now, historically speaking, uh, it is very important and vital to inform all of you uh, especially in this particular gathering because I think this is the first opportunity to meet a lot of us here from different states, uh, from the Madigo community and also the Muslim community in Liberia to inform you about the necessity of this particular institution. Uh, no doubt, a lot of you may know that even before the Civil War in Liberia, many of our parents have thought about having a university that will be controlled or governed by the Madigos or generally speaking by the Muslims in Liberia. Now some processes took place uh, 
But unfortunately, the Civil War came and everything stopped. So some of those uh, people that will be mentioned that really took part in this particular initiative uh, were Dr. Kaba and the Alicia Kafumba Kone and uh, others who may not be uh, present uh, alive today. So now, the idea here is when uh, the Civil War ended, later on some brothers and sisters initiated or energized the whole dynamism again to start the whole process. But then Ebola came and the whole thing stopped again. So what happened is that recently, uh, during this uh, three years, we, uh, along with other brothers and sisters in Liberia, at the University of Liberia, we decided to really take the initiative to establish this university, which would be very modern. Um, the Muslim Council of Liberia um, appointed Brother Osman uh, Kamara to be the chairman for the steering committee to run the university. So a lot of things have been done. Uh, Alhamdulillah, through the collaboration um, with Muslim Congress of Liberia, um, the alumni, uh, the Muslim Congress Alumni Association in, uh, in uh, U.S., we collaborated with other organizations to send a container full of educational materials. Alhamdulillah, everything went there, and we established the infrastructure. Alhamdulillah, we have library now. We have the um, uh, information lab. We have the, um, the science lab. What we are waiting for at this moment is to have a final accreditation uh, so that by September, the university can be functional. Now, a lot of people may ask the question, why is it relevant? Why a new university matters? Now, some of the most important thing I, I hope to really convince all of you about is the unity of the Muslims in Liberia. Uh, it symbolizes the pride of the Muslim in providing genuine, marketable, productive, and transformational education, not only for Muslims, but for all Liberians. It represents a platform to bring awareness of the identity of Muslims in Liberia. So, uh, those are the philosophical uh, foundation of why it is very vital to establish a university in Liberia. Now, you will want to know what are some of the accomplishments and challenges. Uh, in terms of accomplishment, we have succeeded to have a preliminary accreditation right now. Secondly, we have a library, we have a computer lab, science lab, and just recently, one of the political uh, leaders I think all of you may know him, Cummings. He donated a very huge generator to the university. And also, thank you. So that is one of the achievements that we had. And not too long, the Ministry of Health in Liberia used the, the, the premises of the university to host uh, a health fair for two days. So a lot of things are taking place, and alhamdulillah, I would always like to appreciate the fact that we have a lot of brothers and sisters behind the background contributing to make the thing uh, a success. Now, the, the, uh, the, what we call the challenges that we're facing right now, which we need to explain to all of you, so all of you can come on board, because we need each other. Because this is not a one-man show, this is for the entire community, Muslim community in Liberia, that will empower the Muslims and to also help the Liberian economy. Because when, uh, once established an institution, it's not only for Madigos or Muslims, it's also for the entire thing, which is a serious thing. We need uh, help to renovate the university in terms of painting, ceiling repair, doors and windows repair. Uh, second thing is set up an administrative office, whiteboard, plumbing, issues, uh, student decks, and chairs. 
And also we need a uh, few air conditions for the science lab, computer lab, and library. Now, coming to the conclusion of my speech, uh, it is very important that if all the Liberian Muslim in the diaspora work together, we can make this institution a great university in Liberia, bring a positive change for the nation. So, uh, in conclusion, gentlemen, uh, this is your call. We are here from different parts of uh, US. We will really appreciate if everybody can join us to donate whatever you want to donate in terms of ideas, in terms of resources, and I think this will bring a lot of uh, economic achievement and educational uh, empowerment in Liberia. With this, I would love to uh, uh, stop here, and may Allah have all of us, and thank you very much for the university. So we hope everybody will have the opportunity to see what the university is about. So we also like to collect database of individual uh, organizations so that we can get you guys contacted. Thank you. Um, I was sitting out here almost tearing because we never have anything like this in Liberia. I mean, Islamic University? You kidding me? So this is an opportunity for all Muslims. So, you know, this is something that we should die for. This is something that we've always wanted and it's there. So I think, you know, I will ask the administration, every one of you should actually do a very good fundraising for this. Now I'll be the first person to do my, any fundraising you guys want. I want to participate because this is a great opportunity for our country and it's a great opportunity for we the Muslim in Liberia. Our fathers be fighting for this. Yeah. I will give a... Uh, I want to speak because I visited the university the last time I was in Liberia. I spent a couple of hours there. The, the facility that uh, they are using now was built by our our parents, all of us here. Imagine from uh, Maryland all the way to Cape Mount, all of the institutions that were built by men and women who could barely write the first letters of their name. So here we are. Our chance to leave behind us when we depart this earth a great institution. I really mean this. So I hope that even though it was not officially on this uh, on the agenda of, for this conference, that by the time we leave from here tomorrow or Monday morning, let us make it a resolution, maybe it will be another business, it's everywhere, for us to really convene sometime between now and the next convention in a special convention to raise money for this endeavor. Let us establish the Anul University Fund. Let me repeat, the Anul University Fund. It's my first time seeing Mr. Brahma Sisi. So we didn't talk about this before I came here. But I went there, there's a need for it. There's nothing wrong with a Jesuit school. Georgetown University is a Christian school. The Kelly University of America is a Christian school. a and &E University in Liberia is a Christian school. There's nothing wrong with an Islamic university. But it's not going to happen by itself. He talk about education empowerment. He talk about supporting the economy. That's the right thing to do. So let's get involved. Each of us quietly can fill a container and send it. It's not enough. It's good, but it's not enough. But the collective power of everybody in this room, a one-shot contribution, but a sustained sort of fun, an endowment, if you will, by Firmusa in America, that's how you fund university. That's how the universities here are funded. Please leave, just one more minute, then I will sit down. Harvard University is funded by endowment. About 75% of the students that go there, go there free, but you don't know. You just need to get the academic credentials to get in. Once you get in, most of your tuition is paid off uh, you know, uh, with, with, with grants and scholarships. I know it because I went there. Let's do the same thing. We could target a specific amount every year for this endowment to help poor children, not necessarily from our community, because the, the Christian schools in Liberia are giving scholarships to Muslims in Liberia. I went to Monroga College. There were times they would put me out for tuition. 
Mrs. York would bring me back in so that I could get an opportunity to learn. It's our turn to do the same across the board, not just targeting Muslims, you know, who are less fortunate, but also our Christian brothers and sisters in Liberia who might be interested in going to this university. To kick off this fund, I want to commit myself to FEMUSA or any committee that you, you put together. I will give my time to this effort. This is a working endeavor. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, this is what we need. Do more and do the website so that we know. Cynthia is there. Delta Air Lounge to Liberia. This is the woman who did our LJ Hotel with, 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 with Mr. Uh, uh, Robert Johnson. It was for Liberia to be like Israel, to the African American. That was the vision. So that they can come to Liberia and have a nice place to stay called the RFJ Hotel. The next thing you know, there were demonstrations for work and this and that. And once it was turned over to Liberian management, it started leaking and all of that. This is true. We can do more. We can bring Delta back. So what I'm trying to do, uh, say here is that Mr. 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 President, what's his name? Lai, thank you for building a relationship with Cynthia. You saw for many other endeavors for Liberia. She's a good woman with us constructively. So I just want to lend my voice. I see this as perhaps a game changer in our country. I saw Sister Asta Kaba, I saw the other brothers and sisters volunteering. They're not making enough money. They leave their homes, they go there all day. I could have done it, to be honest with you. And I could make an announcement here, but that's not enough. Let us, after this convention, perhaps convene a special meeting and organize this fundraiser. Maybe do it before the summer is over, or maybe do it before the winter is over, but we must do it before we come back to another convention next year. And I love Madam Oprah Winfrey, and she's a woman of Pele, but um, I'm probably a bi woman from Limbo County. So, um, really and truly, I'm, it's an honor to be here, and uh, welcome to all of you for this uh, Federation of Liberian Mendingo Association in the United States of America. And on behalf of the over 25,000 Liberians in the state of Georgia, I bring you greetings on behalf of the Liberian Consulate. To the National President, Mr. Mamadi Sisse, and Minister of Administration for the Information, Tourism, and Cultural Affairs, Republic of Liberia. Honorable Amara Kamara, former Minister, um, my dear friend, Mr. Lai. Ladies and gentlemen, as the Honorary Council General, I am your Honorary Council General. I am your Honorary Council General. <laughs> And I want to wish you the very best in your deliberations on unity, peace, and tradition. I was with you last night, and I understand the challenges for people of color all over the world. We are not damned people. We are the future. We just don't know it. So even in America, we have our challenges. But today, I want to bring you good and well wishes for your convention, and also encourage you to be involved in the work as Honorable has talked about, that we are doing relentlessly on behalf of the people of Liberia. As a former Rotarian scholar, I lived in Liberia, in Nimba County, Yekapa. I studied, uh, taught actually in Area B School in Nimba County. I also attended the University of Liberia and studied, studied under Dr. Amos Sawyer. And I have conducted almost 50 trade, education, faith, uh, investment missions to Liberia in the last 11 years. So. I want to encourage you to join me as we make these trips home. I also think it's important to note um, for the Mendingo people, we need you here. We need you to participate in some of the work that we're doing in the consulate office. So under the leadership of His Excellency George Manawia, the pro Port agenda for prosperity and development, infrastructure, tourism, agriculture, education, health care, we know Liberia is rich and natural resources. It's also rich in human resources. And that's why it's important that we go home. And so for me, as the Honorable was talking about, yes, Liberia is the home for the African American. And Ghana got ahead of us. They're celebrating 400 years of return. Liberia is the door of return. And we're trying to maximize on that Honorable and other members of the platform uh, table, just in terms of how we can build and boost tourism. 
This is a critical point in America's history to work with African nations to develop a strategic partnership where it's mutually beneficial. The big giants are already there, the Chevrons, the Mobile Oils, the Firestones, but where are you? Your small to medium-sized businesses are needed. Many of these businesses are laying off Firestone. We just got word that Coca-Cola bottling, after 70 years, honorable, is laying off people. People are needing jobs. We need you. Whether you have a small to medium-sized business, you want to create something, Liberia is your home. Let me help you build your business on the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, how can we move this conversation forward with the National Day of Unity in your agenda? Please let me offer a few remarks and then I'll take my seat. As we consider that black America is now 46 million people in America, people, black people like me, 46 million with over 1.3 trillion in buying power and we travel. I spoke to the president of the National Black Chamber of Commerce yesterday and he said, Liberia has never even approached us. We're in Ghana, we're, in, we're all over the place, but we're not in Liberia. That's going to change. There are 100,000 members of the National Black Chamber of Commerce. They should be partnering with you to strengthen your business, to go into partnership in business back home. The investment power of African Americans is more than the combined GDP of Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Kuwait. Recognizing that Africa is a continent of 1.2 billion people and counting the opportunities for America and for you and I are endless. Yes, it must be thoughtful and fair and we all must be able to participate and be leveraged in the work that we do. Furthermore, are you aware that through the Africa Free Continental Free Trade Area, just recently signed by the leadership of the African Union. It will bring together all 55 member states, only two have not signed, Nigeria just signed. It will be covering markets of more than 1.2 billion people on the continent, including a growing middle class and a combined GDP of more than $3.4 trillion. All you have to do is start small and grow big. We cannot sit by the wayside and let the Chinese, the Lebanese, the Indians take it. They will. The conference honorables at the distinguished table just a few months ago in, in Ghana. And I had an Indian woman who was working for the Tony Lumenu Foundation. She came up to me and she said, I promise you, if you people don't pay attention, the Indians are coming. She said, I'm not. Wow. Uh, they're going to take it all. She professed it. So if we're not there in the gap, they will be there. But not under my watch. Not under my watch. So for me right now, the Medingo Association throughout the Americas, we encourage you, please call my office. You're always welcome. We have internships for young people. We have partnerships with Savannah State University, the Carter Center, Clark Atlanta University, Georgia State University, Georgia Tech. We need young people. Let them come and intern in my office. We would need to build the infrastructure for Who's going to replace me? I'm not going to be doing this work forever. We need young people to become diplomats in the Foreign Service. The Mendingos, bright, educated, well-versed. Please come and be a part of what we're doing. And let me also mention that we've signed a Port Authority Agreement. It's our fourth signing of the Georgia Port Authority Agreement between the National Port Authority and Georgia. We are increasing trade between Georgia and Liberia, but the containers on our bowls at the table are coming back empty. Why is that? because we are not able to reach the AGOA standards of packaging and processing. We need your help. Let's provide the leadership. Let's bring these containers back full of whatever you want to bring back from Liberia. Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport, we signed a sister airport agreement with LAA and Hartsfield Jackson, the best and busiest airport on the planet, is now partnering with LAA. Why is that important? It's the brand. We want that affiliation to be the best in class. Liberia used to be known as the best in class in, in lobster and shrimp. We want to be the world's best in terms of shipping that on an airplane from Liberia to Whole Foods and to restaurants in Georgia. I've seen the lobster in Liberia. It's amazing. Why not work with GLS, Global Logistics Systems? We are working with them now to develop an air cargo village. We'll have an air cargo village in Liberia. Be the best in the region. Be on the lookout, but come and be a part of this. It's an exciting time to be a Liberian. 
And finally, I will say to you that the celebration of the Year of Africa is the decade of the Year of Africa, the door of return. 2021-2022, we are working with major institutions, including the National Black NBAA, 14,000 strong. We were at Providence Island in February this year. We gave them African names. They want to help build the capacity for traveling, tourism, business, and, de and development on the continent. With your help, through peace and unity, respect and tradition, my office is open to you. On behalf of the Liberian Consulate in Georgia, you're most welcome, and please enjoy your stay. Thank you, Cynthia. That was great. I beg your indulgence. I want to speak a little longer. Please. Yeah, maybe five minutes. We'll get a guest because Please allow me to speak a little longer. Please, I'm going to. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We'll give a. Thank you. Yeah, like, well, we can't go over 10 minutes. Sir. Thank you. Please. Please. Mr. Mamadi B. Sise, President of Musa, officials and members of the Musa, Brother Amara Musa Kone, former Minister of Finance, Development Planning, ROL. Big Brother Bangali Traware and all former presidents of FEMUSA. Everybody, your hello. I bring greetings and salutation from His Excellency Dr. George Manewia, President of the Republic of Liberia, and my overall boss, Honorable Len Yuji Nangbe, who made it possible for me to come here today. I did not come with a prepared text to read because I know what is a problem that is existing. Today may be six or seven days in this great country. I have talked to people, I have met people, I have seen people, and I still talking to people. Our biggest problem is lack of disunity lack of understanding, and above all, lack of law for each other. And when these things are lacking, we will go nowhere. I'm happy that uh, Brother Amara Kona is here. He spent 12 years in the government of Liberia, Ministry of State, finally, not 12 years, 10 years, right? 10, yeah. 10 okay, you're not far from 12. <laughs> so he knows the problem we as a community face in that country we call Liberia. I'm just from there. I know what is happening there about us. So I thank you, my people. Those of us that have the opportunity to fly to this great country of America, we expect you to think above us because you have all the facility. You have all the things to think rightly and think above us. I'm grieving because we are not united. If we are not united and speak in unison, the purpose and the reason this organization was formed for, it will never come to pass. I'm told that this year makes this organization 11 or 12 years. I'm told that every president that has taken over this noble organization has fought. No president has been elected two times. Am I correct? Right. No one has been elected two times. One time. And before the one time can end, the battle can be tough. <laughs> this should not be the case. I'm not a voter. I don't live here. Brazil, please stand. Please stand up, Mr. 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 Mr.
but I'm 100% sure one person will win tomorrow. Am I right? That's right. right. And anyone that will win tomorrow, you did not beat anybody. You only won because you're supposed to win. Nobody lost. If Sisse is re-elected, he will be the first to make a break. President and re-elected. Oh, yeah. If Morris Roman is elected tomorrow, yeah. I got no cause to doubt your ability to lead. I have no cause to doubt. If Madam Kona is elected tomorrow, she will make the bigger history the first female. So all of you that part to play to make Famosa vibrant and important. But this vibrancy will not come to pass if we don't love and respect each other. In as much I want the people to respect our leaders who will be in charge, the leaders must also respect their followers. If we elect you tomorrow, if we respect you, please reciprocate our respect. To God that created all of us that we serve him, this organization can do more than what she has done. Everybody runs to America for help. It's in America you are. So the help must come to us in Liberia. You form the organization, but you are not the one that's going to benefit. It is us who are in Liberia that's going to benefit. Have you taken your medical delegation to state of New Georgia, uh, state of, and uh, from Georgia to Atlanta, no. to, to, to uh, yeah. New York? No. Have you taken it from New York to any other place? No. Where are you taking it from? Okay. From USA to LRB. That means you are working for us to benefit. And we will never benefit if you don't unite yourselves. Please, I know what we are facing in Liberia. More right from there. You were in my office a few months ago. I have not met Mrs. Madam Kone before. So I beg you people, you'll come together. If we come together here, we will benefit in Liberia. Yes, when I say come together, I don't mean we all should be in one political party in Liberia. No. Join your party, I join my party. But joining party does not make you an enemy to me. Anything you can associate with in our law, you can disassociate. But you can't be a political man today and be a former political man tomorrow. It can't happen. I've not seen that. A political man is always a political man until he dies. When he dies, a political man is dead. I've not seen it. You can teach your name, the law requires that. But you can't teach your trap. You can teach your republic, yes. But you can't teach your trap. So, trap is very, very important. And we are discussing tribal organization in the truest sense. So I beg you, my people, brothers and sisters, if you are re-elected, bravo. Small brother, if you are elected tomorrow, I will be happy from Nima from Nima. My sister, if you are elected tomorrow, my grandmother was a corner woman. So my grandma will be in charge. So we are one. I will be the happiest man. Then I will take a message back to Jete by Jogota. Jogita. Other places. When I got my visa on the 17th of May this year, I plan to come and meet with this occasion. I told Brother Conan, I said, I had got my visa for the first time after many, many years. He said, I would be happy if you can come to America. Today we have met here. So I beg you, my people, Tam is my worst enemy. I got more to say. But if you talk more, you make more mistakes. So please, let's come together. I'll have more better. Advice. I think everybody is speaking on peace today. Uh, before I further delay, uh, our next speaker, I'm about to introduce, I want you to please into, um, uh, let me your ear. This is the first, very first time when we're going to have a youth within our community that is going to speak in the voice of the youth. What the youth think of Famosa? This is going to be the very first time. We have so many programs, we've never had a chance to bring our youth to speak to us. So today we're going to bring one of our daughters. She was born in New York, she's about 20 years old. She stay attending, she's a junior at Georgia State University. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage Fatim Kamara.
President, Mr. Chairman, the Board, the entire executive leadership, our dynamic guest speaker, dignitaries, and distinguished guests. I would like to also welcome you to this year's 12th Annual Fomosa Convention. To begin, <laughs> to begin, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out today and supporting this year's convention. I know that many of you have traveled from far to be with us today, and I just want to let you know that it is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Now many of you, <laughs> now many of you may not recognize my face, but perhaps you know my parents, Lasana and Asada Kamara. Mommy, how you guys can stand up? My parents are active members of FOMUSA. I am the oldest of four, and last month, my mother, my siblings, and I actually took a trip back to Guinea. Now, in the initial planning of this trip, I wasn't particularly interested in going. And it wasn't because I didn't want to, but I just felt like I had a lot going on with school and with work, and I just did not think that now was the right time to take a trip. However, my mother did convince me to make the time. Going back to Africa just made me realize how proud I should be to be a Madingo woman. be a Madingo woman. So, I mean, when I went back there, just waking up to the calls of prayer and being surrounded by people that I share a common background with was tremendously heartwarming. But on the other hand, seeing people deprived of basic life necessities such as food, water, and a proper education was equally as heart-wrenching. After seeing both the good and the bad of our beautiful country, the images and the experiences were stuck in my head. I came back even more invigorated to make something of myself, not only for me, but for my family and for my country. One of the reasons behind this was because when we went there, I saw just how useful the skills and the knowledge that my mother acquired here in America were to her. While we were there, over a two-day period, we saw over 30 patients with symptoms deriving from conditions such as high blood pressure, diabetes, and pain. I saw. Now you guys can clap for her, she did a great job. She did a really good job. Clap for her, she did a great job. I saw how she was able to use her opportunity to come to America, had now come full circle, and she was able to help those in the very country that she had left many years ago. I too, from that moment, decided I wanted to be able to do the same. We are a part of such a beautiful tribe that has such unique customs and traditions that we must cherish, protect, and value. And Filmusa actually gives us a way to do that. So since we are all unified here today, I ask three things of the current members of this prestigious federation. My first request is for you to extend your well wishes and prayers to all of the Liberian Madingo youth that are here with us today, as well as the ones that could not make it. My second request is for you to invite us, the youth, into the fold of this organization. We are the future, meaning the future of FAMUSA literally lies in our hands. For the youth, sit down with your parents and have a conversation with them. Talk to them. Listen to them tell you about their stories. Learn more about your culture, because having that understanding will guide you on this journey of this life. My third and final request is for all of us as Liberian Madingos to invite others into our conversation. One of the main purposes behind the creation of FAMUSA was to be able to have discussions for the betterment of the welfare of the Liberian ethnic society. And in order for us to do that, we have to talk to others about the importance behind our history, our people, our food, and our language. By actively, actively investing our involvement into FOMUSA, we can do this. But it takes the commitment, the dedication, and, and the participation of each and every one of you that are here today. And that is what I ask of you guys today. Thank you. Long time ago, doing his presidency, and thank you, Mr. Bangali. I know the reason why you're crying, because we work on this. We, it was our idea to actually enforce this. Um, but it was so difficult for us to be able to work in that town when the bull, entire bull were against us. But, you know, I, you know, but um, it's okay. Um, but at least I'm happy today that this message has been delivered and everybody listened to it. This is one of the most powerful messages that was given to every one of us here. This tells us that this organization that we have, we're always fighting with each other, it's not going to belong to us. Like the minister said here, yeah. He said that we pay for it, we sponsor it, but it's for them in Liberia. 
It's the same thing. We do everything is here is for this youth. There's got to be a transitional period from us to them. When are we going to get that into our hands? Start building that instead of fighting. That is the message that was given to you today. And so, Mr. President, uh, Mr. President, I do have the copy of her, of her, her speech, and I'll be presenting it to you so that you can look at what she said. The three questions, whoever is lead, um, elected, the look into it is very, very important. It's very important. This is how the youth thinks. That's what's in the head. Thank you. All right, and then we will move on to the next agenda on this. Uh, before that, I would like to recognize certain people that are not here. I would like to recognize Brother Rado Chibate. Thank you. And I will also recognize the, the, the chairman of the board, former chairman of the board, to get, be very brief, five minutes, because we're going to get the, the that means less than five minutes, we're going to get the, the speaker up there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amara. So, you know, I always want to take this opportunity in my new capacity as the Deputy Director for Outreach at the New York City Census Office to really just galvanize the community about what's happening in 2020. If all of you have been following the news, which I'm sure all of you have done, you know that there's a movement to, from DC actually, to really discourage immigrants from participating in the census. And Trump and the entire DC entourage really want to strike fear in the hearts of immigrants so you don't participate. And if you don't participate, what happens is that you, you risk the you risk losing funding, and you also risk losing congressional district. So my boss in the city of New York actually invested a significant amount in the city census to make sure we get an accurate count. Census is not a city matter, it's a nation matter, it's a constitutional matter. Every 10 years, the nation conducts census, and that's how the federal government allocate $800 billion to different states, different community, on different, uh, uh, issues like healthcare, public housing, and programs. So, and that $800 billion, a lot of the immigrant uh, 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 populated city risks losing that opportunity. So we in New York, one of the largest immigrant populated city, we've taken the bull by the horn, so the mayor went ahead and created a census unit that is unprecedented, it never happened before, because we really want to be able to prepare to, to, to face and, and, and change the narrative around the fear mongering that is coming from Washington, D.C. All of you know that there was an effort on the Donald Trump part to insert the citizenship question on the census. And census, everyone needs to be counted come 2020 April 1st, whether you are documented or not. You need to be counted because if you live in a state, once that state is properly counted, the, 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 the funding that is allocated for the people of that state will be given to that. But if you're not properly counted, and I gave this narrative yesterday, if you live in your house and you're 10 people there, but you're afraid because maybe the five people are not you know, documented and the census enumerator come to your house and you tell them there's only five people, guess what? You, if that house is supposed to get $100, they give that house $50. Guess what? So that 10 people now will be struggling on that $50 instead of $100. It's just common logic. All right, so I want all of you to take this message as an ambassador. This is very important. President Obama did an incredibly well job to really emphasize and amplify the interests of the immigrant community nationwide. This president is, is moving towards retarding all of that effort. So we won recently because the, the Supreme Court ruled on not adding the, the, the citizenship question to the census, which is a huge victory for all of us. But I've told people the damage has already been done. People are there panic all over the nation now. As a matter of fact, as we speak today, there's a scheduled ice raid. And I know some of you don't live in populated immigrant city like us from New York. I mean, we, we, we just hear every day, oh, they just pick up that person. Oh, they just pick up that person. So we know that for a fact. So, but the reality is we need to get counted. So come 2020, as you leave from here today, right? Please talk to your neighborhood, talk to your family member, talk to your friends. When the ballot gets out in April, let them not panic. There's something called Title 13 in the Constitution of the United States of America 
that protect the confidentiality of census information. So it's illegal. So even if the census, the citizenship gets on that ballot, Trump can't use it. He can't use it. It's a crime to use that. So if I'm open as undocumented and he fill out that census, that census form, and the, the after everyone is counted, Trump can touch that document. No one in this country can touch that. It's called Title 13. So we need to understand that. So even though he's been talking a lot about getting this question on it, and it did not get on it, but people are still panicking. So I just wanted to make sure I take this opportunity. I know we are here for a bigger goal, but I wanted to make sure because as residents of this country, we have a responsibility to this country as well. We have kids that are growing here. This young lady just spoke very eloquently, you know, young person who is thriving to make an impact. So when we come to these conventions, we need to also talk about our lives here in the United States. So I wanted to make sure you are aware of that. Thank you very much. Okay. We will now skip Femosa board chair. Oh, after that. Really? Yeah, that's what we will skip. Oh, oh. Yeah. And then move on to introduction of the keynote speaker, Ms. Moana. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Moeman Sharif, the daughter of Musa Sharif and Maya Abba Sharif. I am, I am here to introduce our honorable keynote speaker, Mr. Muhammad Kedda, who was born in Nimba County of Liberia from a family of 21 children, and he was number 18 in the line. He is currently married with children. Um, he started his primary and secondary education in the city of Gompa, Nimba County. In, in 1982, he graduated from Booker T. Washington Institute with a certificate in bookkeeping in college in Swakoko, Bong County, after studying for two years there. He was then fortunate in receiving Ben, where he completed his courses. And then in 1995, he transferred with credit to New York County, not college, in New York. He graduated from New York Real Estate Institute as a licensed real estate broker in 1983. And in 2003, he obtained his BSc in Business Administration with emphasis in human resources from Yacht College in New York. In pursuit of his dreams as an academic, he continued his study at Yacht College and received an MBA in 2006 from the School of Business, Computer Science, and Communication and Human Resources. Furtherance, it's a long journey for academic, furtherance, long journey for academic excellence. He is currently on a candidate list for a PhD at the City University of New York. Um, as a list of some of his works and experiences that he's accomplished throughout his life, um, he first started off as a junior in high school, and with much help and experience from his brother in the gas industry, he was appointed the first youngest general manager of Shell Gas Limited Liberia in Nimba County. And from the years of 1982 to 1985, he was appointed as field manager for Nyanko Inc. for Liberia. In 1988 to 1995, he served as general manager for Speedy Group of Companies in Liberia. And then in 2005, he became broker slash owner of Transcontinental Realty Group Incorporated, CEO of Kitsma LLC, both USA-based companies, and president Kitsma LLC Development Corp. He is a member of the Realtors, current board chairman, Millennium Man of Liberia, the board chairman of the, of the Liberia Community Association of New York, member of board of ULAA, speaker of LAMANY, senior board member of Unico New York chapter, and former president of the United Nimba Citizens Council. He's also a member of a volunteer group in New York City for homeless people. Um, these are just a list of some of his few accomplishments since he has made and will continue to make multiple more. And we just want to thank you and introduce you to, to come out here and enrich you with your words. Remember, uh, I was right to the airport and I had my suitcase on my head. I'm a returning suitcase, Famosa. <laughs> and uh, I saw a friend of mine, he rushed to me. He said, Keita, 
I need help. I said, what can I help you need? He said, we are now united. Things are stepping apart. Then, then he locked again and said, well, what is in the suitcase? I said, Famosa is outside now. Then he took a car. Not in our mouth, but our friend with me. <laughs> so, <laughs> you see, I have Famosa in the bag. And somebody else rushed into me to help a member of Famosa. That means Famosa doing great. Mr. President, Mr. Chairman of the Board and Directors, our distinguished guests, Mr. Minister, former, and the Deputy Minister, Mr. Kumar, uh, Mr. Ansumana Jabate, the former President of FAMOSA, former Board of Directors, our elders, the youth, what this I should care about, but the problem about it, my hand not gonna remain like this. I'm gonna put it down because we're gonna shake the ground today. <laughs> our elders, our religious leaders, I'm so happy to be here. I told you once, I said, if you call upon me anytime, I will be here. But it seems though, the topic today that I'm supposed to speak on, Everybody finished talking about it, so what should I say? I don't know what to say anymore. Except you're not getting the concept. Except you don't believe in yourself. That's the only way. Because what I'm coming to say here is just to entertain you, that's all. But the truth has been said, the brother said it, those have been here before. However, the theme today is moving forward together in unity. Can I put it in down a little bit? You can hear me? Yes. You, can, you can hear me? Yeah, I think you can hear me, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll hold it. I'll hold it. Thank you so much. But, man, I know you're going to shake it. I want him to come near so he can massage my body. What are you making for me? <laughs> you see, it's so sad that uh, I almost, I did share tears today. Before the coming of the settler, before 1822, when they landed in Chevrolet Alley, we were united from Mali Empire, Wasolo, coming down all the way to the East Coast. It was a single route for the Mandingo. Put it in front of me, smoke. So the boy can see my face, you know? No, I can't hold it. We were, it was unity that brought our people down. For those that didn't know the history, can you tell me the reason why Liberia was never colonized? Can anybody tell me the reason? And the British can go to Sierra Leone, and they can go to Africa, Mali, I was surrounding every the big country like Nigeria. What made you think they couldn't come to Liberia? Because your forefather fought they fought to keep Liberia the way it is. People talk about independence in 1847. We were an independent country long before the coming of the settler. We fought to keep that country. I'm not talking about unity right now. Coming to Famosa. 25 years, Labro declared independent. They couldn't stand. Because the other travel group make sure that they have the people get out of there. But who made a peace accord? It was your father, your great grandfather. Why you are disgracing us? Your great grandfather sacrificed their time, their blood, and brought peace to Liberia. And those that we gave their seat declare us as outsiders. You think the war is over? 
This is the beginning. 20 years ago, during my speech, I said, and I quote, at a universal Liberia, that 10 years from now, Madinos will be counted among a master's degree. The BSc is going to be like a certificate and PhD. Counted today. How many of you got master here? Come to pass. That was 1847 coming down to 1848. 1964, when the other country was added to Liberia to declare as a country, when the people went to Nimba County where I was born, we were there. We fought for our right. That happened. Come 1977, some of you were not born by that time. 1978, 1979. At that time, one taught my pass away. <laughs> he said, Pack your law. Yeah. Back your law and leave because your father is dead. When Omen Sano's store was broken, 1985, when it stood in the mosque, 1985, when it was said, I shall use it as my club. Then you sit on your own Facebook cursing each other. I'm not done with you yet. I'm not done with you. You know, they saying everything. Like I said, I will tell you something today. Do not use the occasion because you went to the burial ground. Somebody passed away today. I will go pray because you never prayed before. As soon as you walk out of there, you will never pray again. If you walk out of here today, I swear to God, and you don't remember the peace and unity of our forefather bed, then you are cursed. Then you are cursed. Now, walk out. <laughs> In my personal definition, is a courage of atmosphere used to reconcile or settle unfinished businesses or things that we fear most in our lives. What is reconciliation? Is a God-given franchise given to you as people you use to accept your thought and bury your pain to better your brother. With that, however, it starts with your willingness to speak the truth with your intent of seeking forgiveness. In Famosa, we pretend. When I ask you to forgive me, Deep down in my heart, I have something else because I want you to tell me something so I can undermine you. What a fallacy. Liberia Madimo, where are we? But you know what? I don't want to put everything in for Musa youth. Because I told Rich McConnell, don't get the boys on the mantle. Handle it. Because when time comes, they will carry a trice upside down. <laughs> and then you're dead. It. But you know why? Because we have fought, we the older people, we have fought, we fought each other. Who been to Philadelphia? How many months you have in Philadelphia? During Amadou Kroma Dombai program, I see Imam sitting down on the podium. Good people. Salam alaikum. Then when I said the best Arabic, and somebody called me and said, Asalaam alaikum, and I said, Inula. Because if you say peace upon me, you don't speak to me, you call me different way. Yeah, I don't pray behind you. We fight each other. I told them, you call me here today to honor this great brother. Because I'm going to fight for the unity of my Dingo people. You sit here, you and you haven't spoken for 10 years. How can you bring peace? 
For God said, let's stop pretending with each other here. I remember when we were told not to walk to Unico, when we were told not to walk in the house of unit of Nimba County, Mr. Asumanak Jabate, Mr. Kroma, they walked out our identity. People say, if you walk inside here, once the Madingo men will get it out, Mr. Kroma, Mr. Jabate, walk in. They walk, walk some of us through these things. We saw it. We got it done. When a man called me two days ago, we are going to Nima County to build the Women Empowerment Center, which I believe our Vice President, former Vice President, well, yeah, that her daughter was speaking here right now. That's the strength she came on that time. She was a Vice President, Mrs. Kamara. Women Empowerment Center. When I look among the women, not a single Madimo name there. The guy called me and said, Mr. Keita, it's not time to drink. <laughs> Went to Famosa, great organization. I decided to take the names of Madigo that can take part in this because the building we put here in Nima County is a historical building. Where you are part of spot, you put your father's name there. You put your family name there. He said, but I couldn't get it from Famosa. I said, why? He said, they're cursing each other. What is the tradition and identity of the Madigo people? What happened to you? Can you help me? I can't get it for them because I don't trust them. To go in heaven. That's why he told me. I said, what is that? I never been to their first boating here. I just had to see her way. But this time I went there. My first boat is Masa de Masa. If you see Masa de Masa, it's me. Masa de Masa. <laughs> but you know, we have a lot of work to do. What Famosa youth are doing today, we are the creator. What the Famosa youth are doing today, our clergy are responsible. What Famosa youth are doing today because we didn't teach our children the right thing. You are not wrong, we just forgive us. If we were united prior to you taking over Famosa, I swear to God, you will respect everything. But we were divided. This unity. And one person took and gave it to you. On a divided line. So your issue of making sure that you cuss each other on the phone, on the Facebook, we taught you. But today, that will finish. We ask you to forgive us. We wrong you. To our religious leaders. Because... I know, I don't know the verse in the Quran. They say, God, they say, forgive your fellow man. God forgive everybody. Stop preaching. If you must preach, practice it. If you must preach, do the right thing. The religion people in our community are divided to their standard because I know if my brother is an imam, he's against this person, of course I will take him. Philadelphia. Mr. Sherry High and Moss. Jamade can't pray there. Mr. Sherry can't pray there. Jamade Moss. When my mother grow my kids, we raise form. They kick him out. Now the must tend to what? It tend to issue what part of love you are you from? Are you from Bonn? Are you from Mozzarella? Or are you from Lofa or Nima County? Why? Because the people who are holding the holy book, they are not honoring the name of God. And God said, and I quote, if I'm wrong, I stand to be corrected. God said, the worst question I will be afraid is a hypocrite. Yes. You can't preach and you don't practice it. Hypocrisy. You can't preach and you don't practice it. And again, Madigo Pope quick and being certified. Once this man, if they take Kate and make me the minister in the Labron government, you look at that government and say, all right, the government like her because they appointed Kata. 
And you know who I'll call next? My brother. Next, my cousin. Kromaka, no. Next, from Nima County. If I'm born, don't take him. Why? You keep on being certified because somebody took, somebody put as a minister. Do you remember one thing? Anybody appointed in the government as a minister, he's not going to help you because why? He cannot go against his boss or her boss. So those that be appointed in government, don't rely on them. Fight your battle. You enlist your right. Don't rely on those who are appointed in government because they are accountable to the president. When I decided to run as a senator in Nima County, the question has come, how will you settle the land business between the tribal group in Nima? I said, let's correct this on the radio. 35 minutes. The land issue in Nima County had not to do a trial. There's no tribal issue in Nima County. It has to do the squatter right. Had it not been a former, the, the, the past administration. If I say something here today, please forgive me. We were deceived by the past government. If I say something here, forgive me. We were deceived. When Ellie said in our court, put me on the national radio, I will never sacrifice my administration to minority and leave the majority. You think my demon minority? Think twice. But the unity in Nimba County is staying tight. We shall do something better. Nimba is a great county. For those, Madingo, from Nimba, come to Unico, don't stay away. Don't stay away, come to Unico. For those who are from Lofa, go to Lofa organization. If you're from Bone, go there. This is so important. I'm begging you, don't stay away. But don't depend on government to help you. I so appreciate the brother who said yesterday, go tell Joe we are our president to solve our land case. You're making a big mistake. He's not going to solve it. <laughs> if you don't fight for your right, it's not going to work. I commend those brothers that went to Abuja. They did well. Now we have something on the ground. If you think John Weir will solve our land case, it's a big lie. He can't help himself to fix it. You have to fix it. You have to fix it. As for your right, and it's your right, you go for it. Don't say your birthright. And another note. The woman one my digo man had an opportunity to get something. The rest of the people become a class issue. Either you're below the ascender, I can't talk to you. Why? If we can stand and struggle, look for small, small money, two dollars, three dollars to fire our land case, our people are the center can you be here? It is you who can make it right. I told you the last time in Dallas, he said civil war in Liberia. The worst war is waiting for you. Because why? You go to Liberia, you can't enter Lofa. You go to Liberia, you can't enter Nima County. You go to Liberia, you can't even get a place in Bonn. You got the worst war waiting for you. Keep on cursing each other on Facebook. Keep on cursing each other on Facebook. The first way you're looking at is like a lady who calls her children, calls her husband in front of the children. Use the F word. And when that child be arrested, she or he was a nice child. Come on, give me a break. <laughs> I'm never a nice child. Because you instill that discipline in that child. It's the same thing. When you go on Facebook, I have to draw my daughter near from Facebook. 17 years old. Going to college. I withdrew her near from there. Because what she seems so sad. So we can't even stop it. And I'll tell you one thing. You don't have to show your education by writing, for God's sake. You want to see a writer? Go to Masiki. You want to see a writer? We have them. Facebook to prove that you are a high school, you're not a high school graduate, that you're better. That you can do better than college student. Don't do that. Create something. Medical mission, one of the Mr. Sako, thank you so much. Night planet. I tell you what, 
If you think Liberia is so good, if you think you're coming here to look for leadership, here for Musa to go to Liberia, you lie because you're not going to get it. You're not getting it. Because there's nothing here to get. All you have to do, please. I just came from Burkina Faso, Mali, Guinea, and Sierra Leone. I went through those countries. I saw people working so hard. They do a lot of things. When I enter Liberia, like we're sleeping, to go in heaven. Go to Guinea. Go to Sierra Leone, they're just finished with the war. They're making their own farm. Nimba, Liberia, we bring in salt, pepper. Can you imagine we take pepper from Guinea to come feed ourselves? We have the better soil. Do me one favor. Mr. Sako doing something. The time you take to write on Facebook, it's an agricultural process. It will help. <laughs> Start cussing each other on Facebook. The more you cuss each other on Facebook, you bring it us outside. Because when Eula is sick, I talk before Eula, people respect us. When we go to the when we standing in front of people to talk to them for peace, then you cursing each other. Then who are we? Last note. I'm begging you. I wish Mr. Ture, President of Atlanta, is he here? Master Dongila, no Basitile, self rule a crown at Alacas to Usabe. One more Basile self rule can I come at a wall? Go below, below, no beke masale. Bile below, no beke masale. Bile below, no beke jalale. Hey, at your table, no toa. The new one. You know what do I I joke one of Kumuka and Jaffa Mama Mona famous at Akadia Mamma Ben Baby Mr. Bochem. Why tell you that? I in Yaka Chum I in Yaka Chumulo Coco Famusa Kona Yala Ben. I joke. He be famous at Tom and I will lie at the cake uh, Facebook. Yeah. His follower in the court of Rapopedia, people who started like people in the Genesis. They put their hand down, put their hand up. They escorted some of our elders from the mosque. I was just in elementary me, junior high school that time. And he said something. I have more than my to Canada Balunila. What down? What not do? Anima can't it? Now from Mumwa Salaka Bo, Kwa Salaka Bo, but it's still happening. Well, I don't remember what it He said, and I quote, you have pushed me out today, but one day somebody shall push you out for a year. We have a lot of work to do in Anima County. Mr. President, Mr. Ture, thank you so much. When you call me to come, I prefer to come here. And this man here, if anybody else will be for Musa president today, I want everybody to say that's who can make it to be president. <laughs> so, I don't want to take all the time. I believe that today is a new dawn in Madingo Kingdom. I beg you, whatever you do, do insult each other. Facebook, I don't know you're too good. When I send him a message, when I go, he can double to everybody. But I believe they got some part of Facebook called privacy, right? When you send it to somebody, they can want to go to that place. Can you do that a little bit? He won't cause the board chairman, just send it to a private. Cause you up! I beg you. Thank you so much. Please. When my daughter was sitting here just not talking, I hold your father up. Don't make a mistake we made to you. We mess up and give you the word. You fix it and give it to them. We spoil it, we give it to you. You fix it and give it to them.
and by fixing it, we got the people. On that note, I ask for your indulgence. I just said thank you so much for listening. This is the best time we can be together and meet with each other. FAMUSA is a great organization. If you listen to the name, they're not only Liberia. FAMUSA name is everywhere. I went to Burkina Faso, I saw you there. He said, follow for Mr. Step. I went to Mali, the same thing. Every coast, they follow in our full step. You got good organization, hold it tight. You need a blessing from the elders. On that note, I thank you so much, and God bless you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you very much. I met him in person, and if you are in Dallas, and you saw this him speaking. And if you really somebody who pay attention to speeches and not just go there to talk like that brother what I'm talking, he's drinking something. It's like, no, seriously. When you listen to his speech, it shook me because I love to go to speech uh, speeches. You know, I love these things.